Gurdjieff is one of the best known 20th century mystics. Uh, he was a teacher, a teacher of sacred dancers, and uh, he attracts quite a following. Now, I, I think if he'd been called Peter Smith, he might not have attracted so much attention, because, of course, some exotic-sounding name is going to attract people more than a name like Peter Smith. Uh, you've probably heard of Ram Dass, Baba Ram Dass. Real name, Richard Alpert. I think if he'd just been known as Richard Alpert, I don't think he would have attracted the following or interest that he did. So this trick of using uh, Eastern names, or even being Eastern, is very attractive to people in the West, for various reasons which I won't go into now. But anyway, what did Gorjeff leave? Well, he left a mess. By his own admission, he left a mess. And that was the beauty of the man. He didn't leave any settled, and in fact, in reality, stagnant teaching as such. Uh, although people do uh, read his book, Beelzebub's Tales, and pretend to a greater or lesser degree that they understand it. I uh, I knew someone who knew Gorjev, and um, I suggested that uh, maybe Beelzebub's Tales was something to uh, akin to like a book of nonsense or a book of Cohen's, and what I got was a smile. Well, make of that what you will. But anyway, um, Gorjev, I guess, left two... Um, disciples who carried his work on, although I think, well, in fact, both of them abandoned it in the end. So Uspensky carried on Gurdjieff's system, as though there could be any system. But anyway, this was the faith that the man engendered in people. Uh, in the end, Uspensky died a very sad death, and he abandoned the so-called system and told all his followers to go and find something else. So, what is in In Search of the Miraculous is possibly not what people think it is, but I'll let other people find out what, uh, let people themselves find out what it is. And John Bennett was another character, and Bennett said in the end, he said, well, gorgeous methods are not working. And indeed, they don't work. Um, I should, at this point, say I have fairly long history in the Gurdjieff work. I was involved with it for, I suppose, about 10 years altogether. And um, as I've said, I knew someone who was involved or, or knew Gurdjieff. I mean, this person was quite matter-of-fact about Gurdjieff. They said that um, he was an ordinary man and he made mistakes. Now, to most Gurdjieff people, that would be a heresy. They've made Mr. Gurdjieff sit more or less at the right hand of God. But he was an ordinary man, he made mistakes, and this person said they didn't always do what he said because it didn't feel right. Well, good for them. If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. So, we are dealing with a kind of, well, I don't know what you call it, a kind of bit of a, a, a kind of hysteria around Mr. Gurdjieff. And he said, we should consider everything with our own sane reason. And interestingly enough, I knew, well, I, I know a young woman. Um, she came to visit us recently, and I told her to go and seek out a Gorjev group. But I did give her a warning. I told her that there's a lot of Gorjev silliness. And you can always tell whether the silliness has infected various people by the fact that they become overly serious and self-important. Anyway, she went to the first meeting with some particular group that she's found, and um, she was told that she must not think. Well, it kind of contradicts what Mr. Gorgiev said, that we should figure everything out with our own sane reason, which is very good advice indeed. Anyway, uh, 
with the people that I was involved with, it was well recognised that there are a number of silly manifestations in the Gurdjieff work. One is what they call the work face. The work face is an overly serious, very detached, um, indifferent looking expression. So if someone was in front of you having a heart attack, you wouldn't change that expression. It's the work face. And when you're doing the work, you have to have the work face. Yes, it's all silliness, but this is what it's come to. So if you uh, do get involved with any kind of group, you really do need to be careful. If you find an attitude of superiority, aloofness, a kind of dogmatism, you can't say anything unless Mr. Gurdjieff said it, or things like that. And on the other side of the coin, you should really be looking for a sense of humour, a willingness to question, and a lack of silliness. Now this is important because I've had emails from many people who've been involved with the Gurdjieff work and seem to have been damaged by the superiority and aloofness of the people who were running the groups, making the people who were attending the, gr the groups feel really quite uh, diminished and in some sense kind of inferior. So, um, be careful. It's a very seductive, alluring thing, all the Gurdjieff work. As I say, if it was called Peter Smith, it probably wouldn't have taken off. Um, and is there any value there? Well, yes, I think there is some value. I, you know, I met some really, really nice people and some very helpful people. But I also met a lot of silly people wearing the Gurdjieff um, work face with their attitude of superiority or aloofness. So, be careful, because if you get involved with a silly group, it could actually do you harm. They may be silly, but they're actually quite dangerous. <laughs>